let's take a look at the other parts of the notes because here's where we left off okay I said you could get most of these problems done with the stuff that we did yesterday doesn't look like a bunch of people did this but you could get most of this assignment done it's here toward the end where it starts to get difficult you have a few story problems and like I said yesterday you can be absolutely guaranteed you're gonna find some of these on the test that I give you're gonna find some of these on the test that you take on these chapters in 1050 and you're going to see one of these on the final exam. They nearly always put one on there. Okay? So they are story problems. They do take some thought, but they're not that bad once you get used to how they work. Okay? Especially these that involve rectangles. So um, this says maximizing the area enclosed by a fence. So it says a farmer has 2,000 yards of fence to enclose a rectangular field. What are the dimensions of the rectangle that enclose the most area? So this farmer's got... A bunch of fence, okay, big long string of fence that's 2,000 yards long. Okay, that's 6,000 feet. He's got more than a mile of fence. Okay, he's going to make a pen that's in the shape of a rectangle and he wants to make it as, as big as possible, okay, the most area possible. So, we first thing we probably ought to do is maybe draw a picture. Okay, he could do something like this. He could make it really wide, but not very tall. He could make it really tall and not very wide. Or he could kind of find something in between. Okay? Something shaped maybe about like this. Okay? Well, we're going to figure out what type of shape, what type of rectangle is the most efficient way to enclose this. So here's what we're going to do. Um, the first thing you'd want to do on a problem like this is you'd want to draw a picture. Okay, so the first thing you do is draw a rectangle. And then we don't know how wide it is or how tall it is. Okay? Length or width, base and height, all that sort of stuff. So let's use some variables to represent these. So if I were just blindly going to go through and do this, I'd do x times y, or x, y. And like we did in the last section in chapter 3, the area of this would be x times y. What don't we like about that? We don't like the fact that there are two variables. But here's the problem. There's not a function that says y is this and x is this or something like that. Okay? So these are a little bit more difficult because we've got to come up with a relationship between x and y. So let's think about this for just a second. If this is x and this is y and it tells us that there's 2,000 yards of fence, there are a few ways we could do this. The 2,000 yards has to go from here, all the way over to this corner, up to here, all the way over to this corner, and down to here. It's got to go all the way around. Okay? All the way around a rectangle, what's the word for that? Perimeter. The perimeter's got to be 2,000 yards, right? So if this is x, that's got to be x. If this is y, that's got to be y. So how would you represent the perimeter? Okay, it's two x's and two y's should equal 2,000. So here's a relationship between x and y, and I can make this even easier by doing this. Let's divide everything by 2. So this is going to be x plus y equals 1,000. Now, which variable do we usually like working with? Do we usually like having x's in our problems or y's? Okay. Usually like the function in terms of x's, right? Okay. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to solve this for y. So I'm going to subtract an x from both sides. So I get this, y is 1,000 minus x. So remember up here what we didn't like? We didn't like the fact that it had two variables. What can I put in place of y now? Okay, so I can put a equals x times 1,000 minus x. Okay, now, before we get too far, you can actually, this is quite a bit of work. This is actually the bulk of the problem right here, right there. Everybody with me? Okay, but we could make this a little bit easier. Here's what I like to do. I like to say, look, if this is a nice rectangular shape and I've got to take care of all four sides, since these two are the same and these two are the same and they all have fencing on them, if I take this and I divide it in half, that means half the perimeter's got to go here. So that means x plus y has to equal 1,000. Or even better, I think of it this way. 
I think, look, if this is if this is x, and this has got to be whatever's left from a thousand, this has got to be a thousand minus x. Like if I were to say that the two of these add up to be a thousand, and this one is two hundred, what does this one have to be? It's got to be eight hundred. If this is four hundred, this has got to be six hundred. And the way you get that is you take a thousand minus whatever this number is right here. So whether you do it this way or whether you do it this way and then solve for y, or whether you think your way directly to, hey, if these two have to add up to be 1,000, and I've already used x, this has got to be whatever is left over, so it would be 1,000 minus x. Alex? Um, when, you ever, when you divide a, uh, a rectangle, it's, it creates two triangles. Are they right triangles? Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's, well, it's a rectangle, so the corners are always right, right angles, yeah. Uh, you could, but then that would relate the sides to the diagonal, and we don't really need the diagonal to figure out the area. Okay? All right. Now, could we go through and multiply these together and get negative x squared plus 1,000x? Absolutely. Okay? That might be helpful in one respect, and that is that we can tell what shape this is. What shape is this? Parabola opens down. So it's going to look something like this. If it opens down, it's got to have a max. Okay? Now, like I was mentioning before, if you think about these and put all this stuff together, you can actually find some pretty easy ways to solve this. What's the x-intercept that comes from this? Zero. Okay? Think about it on this one. What is it here? It's a thousand. So what we've got is a parabola that opens down and it crosses at zero and it crosses at a thousand. What's my next question for you? Where's the vertex? Okay, or what is the midpoint between the two of those? Because we've got a parabola, whoops, that's ugly. Looks something like that. Okay, the vertex has to be at 500. Okay, now... That's what x is. Let's read the question really carefully. It says, the farmer has 2,000 yards of fence to enclose a rectangular field. What are the dimensions of the rectangle that enclose the most area? Now, was he saying, what is the most area we can enclose? Or was he just saying, hey, tell me how to make the rectangle. I, would, I don't really care how much area there is. Does he want to know the dimensions or the area? Just the dimensions. Well, this is what x is. So that means our rectangle has to look like this. If this is 500, we just figured out what x is. x has got to be 500. What's this got to be? 1,000 minus 500, so that's got to be 500 also. So the dimensions are 500 yards by 500 yards. That's the answer. It says, what are the dimensions? Those are the dimensions. Now, I usually have somebody say this, and I'm going to say this so you, nobody in here has to be embarrassed. Say, so wait a minute. The problem said it was a rectangle. That's not a rectangle. That's a square. Okay. Is a square a rectangle? Yes. yes. All squares are rectangles. Are all rectangles squares? No. Okay. So a square is just a special type of rectangle. So that is the answer. Okay. 500 by 500. Now, if it said, what is the maximum area? What we do is we take 500 and plug it in here. Okay. Remember, find the x-coordinate of the vertex, plug it in to find out what the maximum is, or the minimum if it opens up. Or you can just take the two of those and multiply them together. 500 times 500 is? Okay, I believe it's 250,000, Okay, because it would be a 25 followed by four zeros. right? So that's what the maximum area would be. It didn't ask for that. The answer is this stuff right here. That is the answer. Okay, are there any questions? Yeah. All right. We didn't even get to hear it. Okay. Good? Okay. Let's take a look at the next one. Okay, this one's a little bit different. Did I miss something? I don't know. They like to have conversations. Mm. Maybe we'll have to move them. 
Okay, the farmer is now going to use the 2,000 uh, yards of fencing to enclose another rectangular field, but this time one side will be bordered by a river. <coughs> Let's assume the river is pretty straight. Okay, he doesn't need to fence the side on the river. Okay, the cows and goats and chickens are apparently scared of swimming. Okay, <laughs> what are the dimensions of the rectangle that enclose the most area? So this problem is quite a bit different. On the other one, we just drew a rectangle, and we had to worry about the whole perimeter, all four sides. On this one, we've got a river on this side, and then our rectangle is going to do something like this. We need to fence in this side, we need to fence in this side, and we need to fence in this side. So we only have to worry about three sides. Good? Okay. Okay. Now, if I'm going to go through here and I'm going to choose variables to represent this, I'm going to do it in, a, in kind of a smart way. I have three sides to worry about. Two of them are the same. That side and that side are the same. So if I like working with x's, I'm going to call that one x, because once I call that one x, what's this one over here called? It's also called x. Now, let's think about this for just a second. I'll show algebraically how to come up with the other side in just a second, but let's think. This side is going to be whatever's left of the fence. So if I used, let's say I used 100 here. How much did I use over here? 100. How much is left for this one here? 1,800. How did you get that? 2,000 minus 200, right? Let's say this is, um, let's say this is 400. If this is 400... This is 400. What's left for this right here? 1,200. Because you did 2,000 and you subtracted 2x. That's what you did. Okay? Now, those are the dimensions, and we could now write down what the area is. The area is x times 2,000 minus 2x. You with me? Okay, but watch. If you needed to do this, there's no problem with this. If you called this x and that x, that's the best way to choose it because then you've named two of the sides. And let's call this y. 2x's plus y should equal the entire amount of fence, 2,000, and then just solve this for y. So this would be y equals 2,000 minus 2x. Okay? So you can get that by doing it algebraically, writing everything out. Okay? This is a really good skill to have of thinking, okay, if I've used this much, how could I represent what's left? What's left would be what I had minus what I've already used. Any questions there? Pretty easy? Okay, let's do this the easy way then. It's already factored. What shape is this? Mm, the, the graph of this. No, it's not a straight line. Charles says it's a parabola. How can you tell it's a parabola? Yeah, this would be 2,000x minus 2x squared. There's our x squared. So this is a parabola. Now, if you need to go ahead and multiply it that way, that's fine. If you want to complete the square here, if you want to use the quadratic formula, all of that stuff would work just fine. But it would be a lot easier since we already know it's a parabola. Opens down. What's the x-intercept for this one? Zero. Take a good look at this one. We would normally have written that negative 2x plus 2,000. So that would nor normally be the opposite of this number divided by that number right there. So negative 2,000 divided by negative 2, what would that be? That's going to be 1,000. So here's what we've got. We've got a parabola that crosses at 0 and crosses at 1,000. Opens down, looks something like, that looks a little better. Where is the vertex? At x equals 500. Okay. Now, is this a square? It's not a square. It's definitely a rectangle, Okay, because it looks like this. We just figured out that this is 500, and this is 500. So what's this one right here? That's going to be whatever's left, so that's going to be 1,000. So it's going to be twice as wide as it is tall. It's basically two squares put together. Okay. 
Now, if you have one like this on the test, a lot of people do some of these problems and think, well, it's always some sort of square. It's either one square or two squares or something like that. If you just write down, if you just say, hey, it's 2,000, I'm going to divide that by 4, and the answer is 500, you're not going to get the points. Okay? This is the important part. The whole idea here is that we're, we're kind of developing a different part of your brain, a different part of your thinking skills. Okay? These are made up. These are easy problems. Okay? If you get a job as an engineer, they're not going to be textbook problems like this. But if you can set something like this up algebraically, if you can figure out how to model it with a function and then solve it, when you come across something that's really ugly, you'll still be able to model it with a function, and you won't have some nifty trick like, oh, it's always a square. That's the answer, because it's not. Okay? All right. Any questions? Yeah. Um, if, if this is 500 and that's 500, this is going to be 2,000 minus 2 times 500. It's going to be whatever's left. So I've used 500 here and 500 here. So I've used 1,000 altogether. I've only got 2,000 altogether, so I've got a 2,000 minus 1,000 leaves us with 1,000 for that side. Um, because this crosses at 0 and this crosses at 1,000, so the vertex, the axis of symmetry, has got to be right in between there. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So uh, when you got the 1,000 the first time, this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, what we do to find the x-intercept from this is we take that and we set it equal to 0. We want to know what makes that equal to 0. So if I move this to the other side, I have 2,000 equals 2x, and then I just divide by 2. So again, usually it's take the, take the opposite of the constant, so take the opposite of 2,000, which is negative 2,000, and divide by that coefficient. So if I, if I gave you a problem like this, so let me, let me just do this really quickly. If I had 2x plus 5, x minus 7, and 3x minus 4, and that was set equal to 0, take the opposite of this, 4 thirds is the x-intercept there. Opposite of this, 7. The number in front is a 1, so it's just a 7. Here it's negative 5 halves. Okay. That's the, the shortcut we're using. Okay. Good? Okay. Last type of problem then. Let's take a look at this. Um, this is a little bit of vocabulary. Um, and just a fair warning, they have had a problem like this on the final exam almost every year for the last five years. Okay? So I would make sure you know how to do something like this. I'm not just making this up and saying, hey, let's find some of the way that we can teach them some new vocabulary and a weird problem. Okay? You will see this again. So if I sold four items for $5 each, how much money would be generated? 20 bucks. Okay? What if I sold X items for $5 each? I'd, I'd represent that by 5 times X. If I sold eight items for $7 each, how much money would be generated? $56. Eight items for P dollars? 8P. Okay? If I sold X items for P dollars, how much money would be generated? XP. You take the number you sell times how much you sold them for, and that's how much money is generated. Okay, does anybody know what we call the money that's generated from a sale? There's a special word for it. Okay. Uh, revenue. Okay? Revenue. Okay? Profit is a little bit different. Profit takes into account, well, you know, let's say I sold these four items for $5, but let's say it cost me $21 to get them. I just lost a dollar, okay? So just because you've got that much in revenue doesn't mean you've actually made that much. That's not your profit, okay? So if you sell X items for P dollars, the formula for revenue is X times P. It's this simple idea that we've been going over in this little paragraph. If you want to know how much revenue you've got, how much money you've generated, take the number that you've sold, multiply it by the price. It's that simple. Okay? All right. So this is uh, maximizing revenue. We always like it when we have the most uh, dollars possible coming in. Okay? It says the price P in dollars and the quantity X sold of a certain product obey the demand equation. X is equal to negative 5P plus 100. 
So as the price goes up, what usually happens to the demand? Okay, if they, if they sold iPods for $1,000 a piece, would they sell very many of them? No, so people would buy fewer, so it would go down. You lower the price, more people buy it, okay? So the number that you sell depends on the price, okay? But the price has always got to be between 0 and 20 on this particular problem, all right? So it says this, express the revenue as a function of x. So r equals x times p. What don't we like about this? Two variables. Uh, which one do we need to get rid of? We need to get rid of P. Well, here's an equation that relates X and P. So let's take that one, X equals negative 5P plus 100, and let's solve that for P. Let's figure out what we can plug in for P. So this is going to be X minus 100 equals negative 5P, and let's divide everything by negative 5. So this is what I get. I get P equals, this would be negative one-fifth X. And what is negative 100 divided by negative 5? Positive 20, okay? What do I do with that? Well, get in here. The instruction said express the revenue as a function of X. I've got the revenue as a function of x and p, so I want to change this. The revenue would be x times, what are we putting in place of p? Negative one-fifth x plus 20. <coughs> That's the answer to the first part. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now, this is in this particular section. Let's take a look at the le next part. What is the revenue if 15 units are sold? What quantity X maximizes the revenue? What is the maximum revenue? And what price should the company charge to maximize revenue? Okay, so take a good look at this. Let's break these down. Some of these are easy questions, some are not. What is the revenue if 15 units are sold? That's how many is sold. That means X is 15. So what is, it, what is it asking you to do? Yeah, plug in a 15. So R of 15 would be, we're going to sell 15, and here's the price. So this is going to be 15 times, let's see, negative 1 fifth times 15. The 5 would cancel the 15. That would be a negative 3 plus 20. So this is going to be 15 times 17, and 15 times 17 is, say, 255. Is it? What do you know? It's 255. Okay? Okay, so that's the revenue. If you sell 15 of those items, you're going to generate $255 in revenue. So there's the function we're using. That's how much revenue we generate if we sell 15 items. What quantity maximizes revenue? So we want to maximize this. In the previous problems, we were trying to maximize area. What shape of graph did we have? Parabola. Look at this. What shape is it? It is a parabola. Opens up or down? Opens down. How can you tell? Yeah, this would be negative one-fifth x squared. So if I multiplied these out, I'd get this, negative one-fifth x squared plus 20x. Okay? And then I can see it's a parabola that opens down. Now, that's not the easiest way to use this. The easiest way to use this is to use it in this form. Because just like we were talking about before, if you look at it here, you can tell what the x-intercepts are. What's the x-intercept that comes from this one? Zero. Okay, take a good look at that one. Don't say anything out loud. What would make this equal to zero if you have to? Uh, whoops, negative one-fifth x plus 20 equals zero. If you have to move that over, negative one-fifth x equals negative 20. How do I get rid of a fraction in front of a variable? Multiply by its reciprocal. So those cancel, so I get x equals negative 20 times negative 5. That's going to be 100. Or take the opposite of this number, 
divide it by that one right there. Complex fraction, you'd flip this over. This would be negative 5 over 1. So either way, you get 100. Now, that's not the answer to the question. Because the question says, what quantity X, how many should we sell to maximize revenue? So remember what this looks like. It's a parabola that opens down. It crosses at 0 and it crosses at 100. What is the x that produces the maximum? What is the x-coordinate of the vertex? 50. So it says, what quantity maximizes the revenue? The answer to that is 50. What is the maximum revenue? No. Okay, if you know the x-coordinate of the vertex, how do you find the y-coordinate of the vertex? Plug it in. Plug it into the function. So we're going to plug in 50 into x times negative, whoops. So that's going to be 50, negative 1 fifth times 50 plus 100. Oh, sorry, plus 20. So this is going to be 50. Let's see, one, uh, negative 1 fifth times 50 is negative 10. This is 50 times 10, so this is 500. Any questions? Okay, last part. What price should the company charge to maximize the revenue? So remember, how many they sell depends on what they set the price at. We know they should sell 50 of them, so that will help us figure out what the price is. So if you know they should sell 50, let's come back up here. Was there an equation that related X to P? This one right here or this one right here? The price should be negative 1 fifth times 50 plus 20. And we already figured that out, didn't we? They should sell it for 10 bucks. They sell it for 10 bucks. They'll sell 50 of them. They'll bring in $500. Okay, let me show you why that last part should be pretty easy. This is the revenue when it's 50. It was 50 times 10. We sold 50 of them. That's X, and that's the price right there. That 10 is the, is the price that produces the maximum. Okay? All right. Um, please have most of this done. I will take one or two questions at the beginning of class tomorrow, but that's it. Okay? There weren't a lot of people that got started on the assignment, so please make sure you have it mostly done. I'll take one or two questions, and then we're moving on to the next section. Yeah. No.